Started, um, we just started our second sport ed unit of the school year. So they have uh, six teams of about five or six people on each team. That way it'll be easier to group and do some activity. Yeah, that's, that's great. That'll work out really well. Hey, guys, once you have your penny, come on over and have a seat. We'll get started. But I wanted you guys to be on your team so that we could uh, easily do some activities. All right, grab your team color, Kareem and Yael. All right, so right now the internet is working okay. Yeah. Um, so hopefully it stays that way, but if it cuts out, we just have to work with it and be patient while we reconnect. Uh, this is Mr. Andy Hare. I was telling you about him a little bit yesterday. He is a really, really, really awesome PE teacher, one of the best in the world. And it's a real privilege for us to connect with him. He was up extremely late last night. And I'll let him kind of tell you what he's up to right now. But right now it's about 6.40, 6.53 in the morning where he is. And it's Friday. So the sun that is up for us right now is just coming up to tomorrow for him. So he's, uh, you know, he's already in his Friday morning. So Mr. Hare, can you uh, say hello and tell us a little bit about yourself? G'day guys, how are we? G'day. I'm very impressed with your uh, your fighting uh, seahorses shirt. So I, I um I, I have one. I have one of my own. But um, do you know what? I could not find it to wear it this morning because I'm not at home. Um, as uh, Mr. Metcalf said, uh, I was up very late last night. I'm away in another town um, today because we have our championship uh, track and field for primary school sport uh, on in a in a town called Ballarat. Um, so I'm up here and, and we're on, on track in about an hour and a half, which is fantastic. So uh, I was up very late last night actually getting prepared for you guys because I, I wanted to uh, make sure that you got a little bit of Australian rules football and that it, uh, it will mean something for you today and be able to connect with it as well. So I teach at a school called Leopold Primary School and it is down in a place called Geelong. And Mr. Metcalf will show you where that is later on because he has been there and he has, uh, he has worked with me about a year and a half ago uh, in Geelong. And I have 800 children at my school uh, from prep, which is your kindergarten, uh, to grade six. And so once my grade six is finished, they go off to a different school. They go off to secondary school um, and they, they have a... Uh, probably a range of about five or six different schools that they they all go to. Um, it is almost summer here, so it, it has been quite hot, um, and we've only got nine weeks left of school, which is fantastic because we get our summer holidays over Christmas, and uh, we, once Christmas comes, we know that we're um, we're really going to enjoy our five or six weeks there that we can have uh, going to the beach and going to the pool and doing all those wonderful things. So today, what we're going to do is we're going to try and break down Australian rules football. Hand up if you know a little bit about it. All right, hands down. Yesterday, they got a little bit of practice yesterday. Some of them are in a rugby unit and some uh, of them are in Australian rules football, but everyone's going to do Australian rules football today just to yeah. make it easy. Hands up if you know a lot about Australian rules football. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's all right. That's good. Can anyone name one team from the Australian rules football? Anyone? Ah, oh, that's awesome. Awesome. Hey, Joe. How are you? What's up, old friend? Hey, man. Um, so 
I'm going to tell you today that you guys there have to barrack for Geelong Cats regardless, okay? So you are Geelong Cats fans. Now, I'm going to show you a little video, and this will just connect you in. So I want you to watch this. Whoop. Nen explains the rules of Australian rules football. Australian rules football, more commonly known as Aussie rules football, is a game played with two teams of 22, with 18 players from each team taking to the field at any one time. The game is played on an oval field that's generally a maximum of 185 metres by 155 metres. This is by far one of the largest fields of any team sports, and players have to be extremely fit in order to cover this much ground. These are the goal squares, the centre square and centre circle, and there are two 50 metre lines arched around the goal posts at each end of the field. Pay attention now, as these lines are important. The game starts with a ball up in the centre square. The object of the game is for your team to score more overall points than the opposing team. To score, a player must try and kick the ball through the middle two posts. If you successfully kick the ball through the middle two posts, this is a goal and is worth six points. If you hit one of the goal posts, if the ball is deflected by another player through the goal posts, or if you kick it between a long goal post and a short behind post, this is known as a behind and this only scores one point. The game is played in four 20 minute quarters for a combined playing time of 80 minutes, so the team with the highest amount of points from goals and behinds at the end of time wins. Kicking a ball through a couple of goal posts for 80 minutes, that sounds dead easy. Well, not so much. Standing in your way are 18 members of the opposing team who are trying to take the ball away from you so that they can score themselves. They are allowed to block kicks, intercept the ball, push you off the field, or tackle you by grabbing you below the shoulders and pulling you to the floor. If they do tackle you, they are awarded a free kick from the spot of the tackle. To move the ball up the field, you have to be quick and you have to dispose of the ball before an opponent tackles you. You can move the ball by kicking it in any direction, running with it so long as you bounce it on the floor every 15 meters, or handballing the ball where you strike the ball with clenched fist to a teammate. Throwing the ball is absolutely not allowed in Australian rules football, and your opponent will be awarded a free kick if you do. That doesn't sound so easy anymore. Is there any other way of moving the ball up the field? Yes, there is. The saving grace for your team is called the mark. If you kick the ball in the air 15 meters or more, and a teammate catches it without the ball bouncing on the ground, this is known as a mark or marking the ball. The player is then awarded a free kick from that spot and cannot be touched by an opponent for 10 seconds. If a mark is made within your team's forward 50 arc, you are awarded 30 seconds to take your free kick. If 10 or 30 seconds has expired without you making the kick, the umpire will call play on and the opponents are free to try and take the ball off you. The game is a back and forth affair full of marks, handballs, runs, goals, behinds and free kicks. But there's a few other things that you'll need to understand before playing or going to a game. For example, Specky. This is Australian slang for spectacular mark. You're not allowed to push anyone in the back, but if there's a marking contest and an opponent is standing in your way, you are allowed to use his back for leverage to try and catch the ball for a mark. This could result in gravity-defying plays for the ball. Interchange. A team is allowed to interchange up to three players per game. Very similar to football, the players must wait in the interchange area and players must enter or exit at the designated areas. The maximum number of interchanges is 120. There is also one substitute in case of injury. 50 meter penalty. If you're stupid enough to commit any of these infractions, the umpire will award a 50 meter penalty against you and the other team will gain possession from the spot where the umpire has marked 50 meters. This is a huge disadvantage as games can be lost from kicks resulting in penalties. Kicks after the siren. If a player marks the ball and the siren goes off to signify the end of time, the game doesn't end there. You are allowed to take the kick. Any point scored from this kick counts. Games have been won, or in St Kilda's case, lost from a kick after the final siren. To the uninitiated, Aussie rules football seems very complicated, but once you understand the rules, it becomes a great sport to watch. If you have found this video at all helpful, please like, share with your friends, rate, comment and subscribe. It takes me ages to make one of these things, and good karma is always appreciated. Aussie rules football is fast, high scoring, and hard hitting. What's there not to love? Coming back to you guys. All right, so did you remember every rule that was there? No. No, no, of course not. And that's, and that's impossible to do because there are so many rules that are part of it. And once you get the feel for how to play, 
then you really understand it. So we're going to get up and move in, in about one more, about half a, half a minute. So we're going to do a skill to start with called a dodge or, or evade. And I'm going to get you to work with a partner. So what will happen when, when I say go, I want you to go get a ball. Now we're going to work across the gym, so sideline to sideline. Um, and when you're there, I want you to have a look at this activity and I want you to try and replicate this. So this is the dodge. I want you to listen. Evade and dodge. The skills required are running and dodging. The player with the ball's role is to make it from one side to the other without being tagged by the player in the middle. The player in the middle must make a decision on which way to go. Must They must predict the play. Once successful, swap over. That's another game from A Squared Phys Ed. What we're going to do, did you understand that? Yeah. yeah. Yep, awesome. So when, when, I, when I say go, grab your partner, grab a ball. One person can have possession of the ball to start with and the other person's got to try and make it from sideline to sideline without being tagged. If you get tagged, swap over. Go. <laughs> Yep, don't forget we're going sideline to sideline, team. Not in not end to end. All right, so you've got a small little space to work in. Let's go. Don't forget to swap over. Can you see him okay? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. See him really well. I saw the big cat, uh, accident right in the middle. I reckon give him one more minute, Adam. One more? Okay. Give him, yeah, give him one more minute. It's good I can see that clock over there, so I can work on a bit of time. What time does your school finish? This class, I have to dismiss them at 3.29. Okay. 3.30, basically. Yep. Yeah, perfect. That'll work well. So we'll go into um, the next part. We'll go into a drop punt kick, which... Um, yeah, balls will go everywhere, but that's all right. I we'll just have to remind them to be safe so they don't hit the lights. And Yes, yes. We have 34 students in here, so we're in a big class. Yeah. And, and our gym is about half the size of yours. Yeah. So what, what we might do, because of the, the kick and the balls going everywhere, um, we might break this time into groups of four 
and they can form a bit of a line situation. Um, so across the gym, then we'll only have eight groups. Well, we could have them just in their. We could have them in their teams. They're sixteen, yeah. so they'll just yeah, yeah. maybe go across from their teammates. Yep, yep. That'll keep it a lot safer. I think. Yeah. Right, yeah, we we have- go, yeah. And if we go that small distance, um, then they're not going to attempt to kick the ball too big. All right, bring him in. All right, hey guys, come on back. <laughs> All right, take a seat or have a knee or uh, take a knee. Yeah, so we won't we won't spend too long um, here, guys. We want to redirect ourselves now. We want to unpack what just happened, and then we want to move on to our next skill. Um, so, what were some of the problems that you found that uh, with the evading and dodging? So the girl up the back, standing up. Yep. Um, yes. Yep. Some of us weren't fast enough. <laughs> so, sorry, say that one again. She what? said some of us weren't fast enough. But do you know on a on an AFL team, um, it's a little bit like a NFL team in that there are roles for certain people and. The, the people that normally stand in and kick goals or defend goals, they're not the fastest people on the field, um, but the person that in the middle uh, who is like acting, acting as a centre or a rover, they tend to be the fastest people. So you've got to find that way. And the good thing about it was that you could have used some of the other teams to form a bit of a fence and actually go around them. Uh, what are some of the other problems? Uh, the girl sitting down with the blue pinny right in front, Okay. Yes, with the glasses. Um, one thing I noticed, it was kind of hard trying, like, not to get run over or to run over yeah. someone else. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. And and if you got um, if you got knocked down, like a couple of people got knocked down in the middle there. Uh, what's what's the best thing to do when when you get knocked down? Well, in AFL, what would you do? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah hop up. Yeah, because. What, um, un- unlike American football, in Australian rules football, if you fall over and the ball goes to ground, the game still goes on. And what happens is that other people will actually then jump on top and try and get the ball out. And it's, it's, a, it's a great um, thing because they try and wrestle over that ball. All right, we're going to move on because we're going to run out of time. Um, I'm gonna, we're going to go on to kicking now. Now, I want to show you this really quickly because we're going to do a drop punt kick. Um, and I really want to show you just a quick skill of drop punt. Okay, this, this is Nathan Buckley. The grip is the starting point, And as is the case with all kicks, it's very important to make sure you perform the drop punt reliably. The fingers need to be evenly spread along each side of the ball with your thumbs extending to the top of the laces as you look down the ball. This is the grip for both left and right foot kicks. It may look like I'm squeezing the ball with both hands, but I'm really getting ready to guide the ball down with my right hand. My left is just supporting my grip. Make sure you have a nice balanced approach if you're having a set shot. Give yourself plenty of room when kicking over the man on the mark before you release the ball for the kick. When you do, guide it down with one hand and aim to kick the football on its bottom point.
With the focus on running, keeping possession and moving the ball as quickly as possible, the handball skill and the way the skill is used has been emphasised and improved like never before. To see how the best in the land work on their handball skills, it's over to Adelaide champions Mark Prosciutto and Andrew McLeod. Today we're going to show you three versions of the handball, but in all of them there are three main teaching points to remember when preparing to perform them. First of all, the ball must be cradled with the bottom hand. Let's call that the platform hand, with your arm nice and long. Secondly, it needs to be hit with a clenched fist. Always remember to keep your thumb outside your clenched fingers, not tucked away on the inside. As a rule, just sit it across your index finger the way Andrew is doing it here. You'll strike the ball with the V made by your index finger. The third thing to remember and practice is stepping onto your front foot. All we want you to concentrate on is, if you're handballing with your right hand, to simply step forward on your left foot, toes towards the target and your front knee also leaning towards the target. Complete the handball by allowing your punching arm to swing through freely. It should be quite natural for you to move your platform hand slightly to the right so that your striking hand comes through in a straight line. Your hands should both be below waist height when you hit the ball. In the early stages of practice, you will need to look at the ball when you are setting up and hitting it. But after a while, you won't need to. You can be looking at your target. Also remember to keep your punching arm slightly flexed or bent and aim to hit the ball on its point. Okay, so this one is one of those skills that we use when we're really, really close. And what we want to do is we want to be able to get the ball away from us because we're about to be tackled and to somebody else. And so the handball is really, really important. Now, as they said, we've got a nice clenched fist. So when we, um, when we come to hit the ball, we want to hit it with the V down below. We want to keep the thumb on the outside of everything else. Okay? Now, what I want you to do is this. I'm going to show you this little quick little activity. And then this is going to bring us into um, our final activity for the day. All right, so this one is just simply called uh, partner hand pass. And the way it works is like this. This activity is called partner hand pass. The skills required are an AFL hand pass and catching. In this activity, you'll stand opposite your partner, move forward to the line, hand pass the ball, and your partner will do the same in return. Thank you for joining us at A Squared Phys Ed. So that's very, very simple. So all we're going to do is we're going to grab a partner. We're going to go back. We want to stand around about two metres from our partner and just getting that ball going. Now we've got to hit right on the base of the ball. Okay, go. <laughs> Go to partner position one, across from the partner. Yep, try not to throw it. That was an awesome one. The, the girl in green standing on the blue line, you are perfect with your hand pass. Well done. See how your partner goes. Yes, sensational. Well done. You are the best group in the house at the moment. Oh, well done. The little girl next to you on, on the right-hand side of you. Perfect. Yep, lean forward. Ah, fantastic. Well done. My little man in yellow, how are you going? Great work. Come a bit closer to your partners, guys. You only need to be about two metres. It's a short little tap with your hand. Beautiful. We have two minutes. Do we hit it? Really close, but... Do we hit it on the yeah, so you want to hit it right on the, the bottom of the ball. See the, the, the point? No, no, no. See the point in, on the bottom end? Yes, that. Yep, that's what you want to hit. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so, correct. Yep. Come 
going to protect, uh, I'll protect the screen a little yeah. bit. Comes flying yeah, no, that's all right. This is Give great. About, um, yeah, I know. How cool is it? Just, oh, look, I've dreamt about teaching it like this before, and it's worked better than I thought. And, you know, I was putting together those little graphics last night um, just for my website, but I thought, well, I'll, I'll set them up um, specifically for your class so then they become really good teaching um, uh, cues and because they're only 30 seconds long it's worked really well so they've picked it up really nice um, yeah I'd love let's to bring them back bring them back okay yeah Keep the footballs nice and quiet. If you need to set them away from you, that would be helpful. We just have a couple minutes left, okay? Aww. So far, you guys are doing great. We were just talking about how nice this is. Um, All right. Guess. All Absolutely. Right. So, what we're going to do is we're going to do this next activity a little bit different um, from what the actual little video that I put together will show you. But we're going to go back to our teams. And we're going to stand opposite in our teams. We're going to use the handball. So what we're going to do is this. It's called hot corner hand pass. Now, don't worry about the crisscross because we're just going to do it. Mr. Metcalf will do the crisscross with you, I reckon, um, the next time you come to PE. Okay? I want you to have a look at this. Hot corner hand pass. The skills required are an AFL hand pass, running, dodging, and catching. In this activity, your teammates are to work diagonally across a square. You need to make sure that you are dodging the opponents who are also trying to work diagonally across the square. When you are at a safe distance and a comfortable distance, hand pass to your teammate who's on the opposite side. Thank you for watching Hot Corner Hand Pass. So instead of doing the cross across the middle, what we're going to do is work across our line. So this time I want you to run towards your um, teammate and then have a little hand pass when you know you can make that distance. They'll take it on the mark. They will then run back across the line, handball across the other way. We have two minutes. Go. One more. One more. One more. One more. One more. That's a nice bedroom you got there. <laughs> it's our motel room again, man. <laughs> oh, you're in a hotel again? Yeah, I'm away at athletics um, up up in um, Ballarat. So I um, I yeah, I'm basically in the boud boudoir. <laughs> nice, I like it. And I didn't sleep walk. No, no sleep. No, no sleep walk. No sleep walk. Oh. Good. <laughs> All right, after this, can you do a quick answer, a couple questions, and then I'm going to let them go? Absolutely. We did this one yesterday, so we'll, we'll shorten this amount of time. We did this one a little bit yesterday. So yesterday, yeah, was, yesterday was our first day of AFL. Um, yeah, awesome. But awesome. this is great. This has been great. Yeah. Yeah, will you bring them in when you, you reckon you need it because you've got the time there? Um, so they've already done it. It's just, yeah, they're running through. So, yeah, absolutely. Bring it right now. Yes. All right, guys, we've got one minute for questions. Bring it in quick. Please set your footballs down and raise your hand and he'll call on you. We have a question about Aussie rules football. Anyone that has any questions? Nobody Talk to me, then. Talk to me. <laughs> Hello. Um, I have a question for um, how many uh, – do you know um, what kind of positions there are in AFL? Like is there like forward, midfield, defense, yep. what kind of positions? Absolutely. So the attackers, we've got the full forward, forward pockets. We've got half forwards and half flanks. So they, they're all goal scorers. 
Then in the centre, we have the centre and wings and rucks, and they drive the ball up and down. And then we have half backs and uh, full backs, and they defend the goals. So, but they can go anywhere they like. Good question. Another question? Sam? Um, when do you start the AFL season? Like, Good question, mate. So the, the AFL season starts in March and it runs through to the start of October. So we just finished our grand final two weeks ago, I think, and unfortunately a team called Hawthorne won the final this year. You, if It's on uh, Fox Sports 1 if you ever are interested. I, I recorded a lot of the games and, and watched them, uh, but they're on really, really late at night. Oh, you'll need a DVR. Uh, Sara. Um, if you shoot the football through the um, goalposts on the end, do you still get points or just do the ones in the middle? Great question. So if you hit the big posts in the middle, you get one point. If you hit the posts on the side, if you hit it on the full, the other team will get the ball as a free kick. If it hits the ground and then hits it, the umpire will come over and ball it up. Good question. Uh, Lazar. Um, how many players um, are there on the field at one time? <coughs> how many players? So you have 18 from each team. So you got 36 on the field, and then you got four on the bench. And they run subs. So they can run subs at any time they like. And they, they may run in a game, in one game, they may run over 120 subs. Well, yeah, so 22 all up. Lazar, be nice and loud. What would be considered a, an out or a foul? <laughs> Sorry, say that one again. What would be a foul? Oh, a foul. So if you tackled someone too high, if you tackled someone without the ball, um, if you uh, kicked the ball and it went out of bounds on the full, um, sometimes you have some some ugly incidents where a, a player will tag or push or grab another player when they are behind the play so the the ball is not even wet near them so they'll get a free kick um yeah lots there's a lot of rules uh to go with fouls because it all it's all about protecting the player all right i think we're out of time uh, say thank you so much to mr Hare. <laughs> Thank um, you, guys, and thank you for allowing me to teach you for 45 minutes. It's the highlight of my day thank you. so far. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. All right, thanks again. Well, um, I'm going to stay on with you for a minute. i got to let these guys go, okay? Yeah. All right, please uh, put footballs in the bags here. Pinny's over there. You guys can go.